Welcome to the 12th episode of the Art Diner podcast. Let's grab a coffee and chat about the recent happenings in the art industry. Today we have prepared for you really exciting topics, uh, such as a super cool show recommendation, a big segment, practically a quick master class about how to do commissions as an artist, and also stick out until the end to find out Rita's poll results on what people think you should price your commissions at. So, hey Rita, how was your week? Did you do anything exciting? There are a lot of exciting things that are happening, but just too many exciting mm-hmm. things, and it's a bit overwhelming. What about you, Veta? Well, far from being a little sick. Oh, what? <laughs> yes, you can maybe hear it. No. I'm speaking like this. <laughs> oh, now I can hear it. Oh, no. That's a board, <laughs> yeah. a board the recording. <laughs> I played a recently out cozy MMO called Palia. I don't know if you heard about that one. No, I'm a game developer that doesn't play games. Who has time for games? <laughs> Not me. I also started watching the live action of One Piece uh, show on Netflix. Oh, I've heard about this one. Yeah, and I actually want to talk about it today. Have you seen the anime or have you read the manga? Listen, so I have not uh, seen all of the episodes yet. I am 14 episodes down. (laughs) I think that a good start is half the work, right? A good start is what we need. I did hear from people who are saying that only the diehard fans can enjoy the show. For them, it might be, seem really cool when they know what's happened in the story already. But it might be a bit disappointing to people who just start to get into it. As someone who only has seen 14 episodes, uh, which currently actually has 1,075 episodes, I can tell you that I did enjoy it and I found it really cool. And I think, in my opinion, of people who don't know much about the anime or the manga can also enjoy it as much. Yeah, like if a show is good enough as a standalone show, you know, when you don't have to watch an anime, the anime, where you don't have to read all the mangas to like understand what's going on, like if it's a good show as it is, I think that's a mark of a good show. Mm -hmm. I don't see these remakes as something that has to do, has to be like a perfect representation of their manga or anime equivalent. It will never be that. It's live action. Mm -hmm. It's so hard to translate different genre content into each other. Even like stage plays, when people are trying to translate stage plays into live action as well. Cats the movie. (laughs) Yeah, and uh, stuff is gonna get rewritten. Mm -hmm. Things are gonna be thrown out, especially if we're talking about super long, you know, manga stories. And let's face it, One Piece is like very long. Yeah. (laughs) But if you're an absolute noob to the fandom and you go and watch the show and you're like, hey, it's great, like, I think that's awesome. If we remember Avatar, The Last Airbender, uh, the movie, the Shyamalan movie, Mm -hmm. like on its own, the movie is terrible. Yeah. So I've heard, I haven't seen it yet. Don't don't bother. It's very boring. (laughs) (laughs) Its biggest flaw is that it's an absolute drag. If the One Piece show is just interesting on its own, then it's awesome. I did hear from Ela on H3H3 podcast, you probably also listened to it, uh, that she fought as a, you know, she has Teddy Fresh, so I guess she's an expert in this, but she thought the costume design looked really cheap. But uh, I... Someone who has no idea about fashion, I found it fine and I didn't mind it at all. What I mostly enjoyed is that it was close to the anime surprisingly, but it didn't come off as like cringy or weird, like most live action adaptations tend to become. Yeah, especially with anime. For example, the Death Note live action was such a disaster. I haven't watched it, but I've seen clips and it's so bad, so cringe. (laughs) I remember watching it with friends as like a movie night party alongside such classics like The Room. <laughs> Look, The Room is like 10,000 times better. <laughs> a billion times better. But it was it was close enough of like bad movie night type of material. I mean, William Defoe is in the Death Note, I think. So like uh, at least William Defoe. The, uh, he played Ryuk. That's all I know because like he's a legend. So oh, that's right, he did. I will. De- 
It's crazy how they got him. It's crazy. <laughs> I mean, the man's a legend. And so. when they the budget for it, oh my god, <laughs> just burning money. <laughs> it's like Snoop Dogg. Have you noticed that Snoop Dogg is like yeah. everywhere? Like if you pay Snoop Dogg, I think he would come. Like if we could pay him, if we had enough money, he could come to this podcast because he just doesn't care. Probably. <laughs> Assuming that we had enough money. <laughs> so please, guys, like and subscribe and leave a comment and mm -hmm. share this mm -hmm. podcast so that someday we can have Snoop Dogg. <laughs> if you want Snoop Dogg on the Hardliner, do all of that. Yep. Yeah, coming back to One Piece, <laughs> I'm not fully done with the show, but I think so far the cast is really well chosen. I like practically every character that they chose, especially I love how they portrayed Buggy the Clown who is this like villain character from One Piece. And it's not necessarily the fact that they must look like an anime character. I think it's the vibe that they're getting through as well. And I think that's what's really important for these uh, live action shows. Mm, nice. So far, Netflix released a total of eight episodes of the first season. But we do have a confirmation of the second season happening. So that's exciting for everyone who enjoyed it so far. I also thought it's quite crazy, and I'm gonna tell you this now, and you tell me, do you think it's crazy? But the budget of one episode was $17 million. I don't think it's crazy because uh, there's something wrong with Hollywood production. <laughs> yeah. In a sense, like, maybe not all of this money actually went, you know, into the production. Wink, wink. But <laughs> Hollywood doesn't know how to make... There are plenty of videos about it, by the way, how Hollywood doesn't know how to make mid budget movies anymore. They're trying <laughs> to make a mega blockbuster out of everything. So the total budget of the whole season was $138 million. And now I'm going to compare it with Game of Thrones. No. <laughs> which is seen as one of the most expensive series to exist. But even they, compared to One Piece, didn't spend much. Yeah. Because average budget of per episode was $8 million. Yeah, because Game of Thrones, uh, not a lot of people know, they start out as a relatively unknown show, like a very niche thing. They, they really fought to even bring the series to life in the very beginning. The very first uh, seasons, they were very sort of low low quote-unquote low budget compared to like these netflix shows for example it is crazy you can do a lot with a lot less money that's why i say that not all the money probably went into production uh, and actually paying writers <clears throat> and actors and everything and costume designers <laughs> And uh, yeah, that's super fishy and yeah, makes you question things. But yeah, big recommendation for the show. Check it out if you haven't so far. And speaking of money, yeah, I am so excited to talk about art commissions. <laughs> I want to know what type of experience you have with them, Rita. But I also got some questions from little Billy. <laughs> oh, Billy. <laughs> if you remember from our previous episode, who is eager to know a lot about this uh, art business side too. So are you ready, Rita? Yes. Okay. <laughs> Let's start off from the very beginning. What is an art commission? So I can answer this, I can tackle this quickly, and then we can like discuss. So a commission, as defined by our Lord and Savior Wikipedia, <laughs> is the act of requesting the creation of a piece. Mm. So if put into simple words, someone wants a drawing from you, and they request it from you, and you draw it for them. In return, usually, hopefully, for money. <laughs> For money, no other way. Now, let's dive into what type of commissions there might be. What can a commission mean? Obviously, art can be anything, so we're not going to get into that. And we'll just, let's just imagine that we're just tackling visual art. Mm -hmm. Of course. Yeah. yeah. So, <laughs> for example, if you decided to sell your work, you're drawing your dinosaurs or sexy furry dinosaurs, I don't know. <laughs> uh, and a, a client comes up and says, hey, Billy, I have a beautiful sexy dinosaur OC I would like you to draw. OC is for original character. And Billy's like, sure. Without even talking about money first, 
I think Billy needs to understand what is the artwork going to be used for. Like, is this for personal use Mm -hmm. or is this for commercial use? So commercial use is a very complicated topic. I think that we can tackle it a bit later in a separate podcast episode. So let's just focus on personal use artwork which is basically a commission that you're gonna get of like character or a fan art character or family members dogs that people just use for their own pleasure like they will print it they will frame it yeah they're not gonna it's not gonna be used in a commercial setting aka not be put on merchandise not be used to advertise things you know so keep that in mind you have to be very very clear when pricing your artwork and making rules that the commission you're drawing is for personal use okay so little Billy found out what art commissions are and they would like to know when would be the time that they would be ready to start doing art commissions what do you think that <laughs> I think any time is a good time. A commission is something, especially when it comes to personal commissions, it it is a great ground to play around, you know, the idea of selling your own art. So any time is a good time, especially if you see a sign that is people asking, hey, do you do art commissions? Like if you get this question, that means you're ready. (laughs) When did you start? I'm, I'm curious. When did I start doing art? It was a long, long time ago, but the last commission I did was probably in 2017, like personal art commission. How old were you? Ooh, let's see. <laughs> uh, Blow up the dust off of a photo album. <laughs> yeah, because I was in U- I started commission do- before uni. So before, I-, I guess when I was 18, 19, I started doing commissions. Mm-hmm. It was all for personal use. And throughout uni, I would do a commission or two. Then after uni, I did like a lot of commissions, but I haven't done them for a very, very long time since 2017 Mm. at this point. What about you? I think I started when I was, um, I was definitely in high school, but I can't remember how old I was, maybe around 15 years old. (laughs) There used to be this game called Gaia Online. <laughs> I don't know if you know. Yeah. That's where I kind of discovered that people wanted artists, like in the forums they would write, they wanted artists to draw their characters from the game. And that's where I discovered that this was kind of a thing in general. And so I would do it for like in-game currency at the start. Mm. But then later on, it was like my second, I think, or third commission that I did, which was for real money. Obviously it was like... <laughs> I don't, I don't remember how much it was, maybe like $10. <laughs> but to me, I spent like hours drawing it, but I was like, oh my God, this is actually happening. Yeah. <laughs> Someone's going to give me money for this thing. So when I was, a, you know, in, in high school and I was just a little art baby, to me, this, this was crazy and unimaginable. I didn't know that game art was a thing. I didn't know that this whole industry of digital illustrators was also a thing, concept art for games. You know, I didn't. Basically, I didn't know any of that. So I was just really excited to get any little sense for my <laughs> for my drawings. When I started commissions, I already knew about, you know, I didn't know about the industry, like the details and everything. Mm-hmm. I just, uh, since I joined DeviantArt, I saw other people doing commissions and I was like mimicking, basically. Yeah. People would constantly post their uh, commission sheets. Yeah, I remember. Yeah, and I would copy them. <laughs> copy the rules copy the sheets copy the prices i would also agree that you can start whenever you feel like you're ready you can at first observe what others are kind of doing and then uh, look at your art and think whether or not you know anyone would be interested even if you think that no one would be interested i think it's still a good experience to try it out and maybe even try to draw something for for free like for your friends you know just to like try out this whole idea of here i'm doing a request for someone and i'm trying to make this person happy you know maybe for like birthdays i think that's a good Mm. um, exercise when your friends have birthdays just draw something nice for them and like maybe their own characters or a character from a series that they would like yeah if you want to start from scratch i think that would be a pretty nice way to start not too like stressful Obviously, if you are someone who's just quit their day job to pursue art, 
from zero that's probably not liable to survive so it would be a bit different yeah a lot of people sadly do start commissions because they need the money yeah so you know if you gotta do it you gotta do it so the next question would be from little billy <laughs> is where to find people who need an art commission i would answer it this way i think there's two types of ways uh, that it might go down so either the client will find you uh, either over social media uh, if you're actively uploading or maybe through friends or acquaintances or you can find clients who leave posts in different places on the internet uh, writing that they need a commission and they're looking for an artist it's not necessarily that you need to find a client yourself but maybe the client will come to you as well i think that's a significant point to make <laughs> yeah do you know that that where like if you wanted a commission now where would you look what would you do yeah i wouldn't look anywhere because at this point since i had the past of making commissions in the in the past i would just uh, make a post make an online post to look at it uh, in this way so you're posting art on social media that's already an advertisement in a way of your skills and when you open commissions make a commission post then automatically, you know, if some of the followers are interested, they're going to contact you. This is how I got my first commissions. I didn't have to search anywhere. Mm -hmm. I didn't have to advertise anywhere. I was just posting for a while, like on DeviantArt. And then, you know, at a point I was like, okay, I'm ready for commissions. And I just made a sheet, made a journal back in the day. You remember journals? Yeah, I remember. <laughs> it's so nostalgic. Yes. Yeah, so. Ah, journals. <laughs> and and that's it. But the thing is, is that uh, funnily, right? Like right now, clients still remember me. The old mm. old clients that I had back in the day, they they will still email me <laughs> if I'm open for commission. Like for new stuff. Yeah. Oh. Basically, just you know, draw the things you love. Do the best work that you can. And then when you're ready to do commissions, your work that you already posted is the best advertisement that you can ever have. Hmm. Yeah, that's a that's a great point. I think uh, for people who, well, for before when we made that example of maybe some people can't really like sit patiently and they need the money like now because <laughs> they need like food on the table or something like that, you know? Uh, if it's like that crazy, I would, um, you know, with the commissions, I always find it more like a beginner's thing the personal commissions i meant it's because they're very unstable as an income source so if you want to have some more stable income source maybe look out for getting a job mm. like a full-time job or like a part-time job and then do the commissions on the side but uh, also you can see seek out the clients yourself i think there are a lot of different forums there is reddit uh, there's Facebook groups, there's Discord groups yeah. where you can advertise your commission sheet, of course. But also some people just are looking for whoever will paint their dog in a classical painting style or who wants to have like a nice anniversary painting of them and their loved ones. I absolutely like 200, 300% agree with Iveta on that point. If you don't have money right now, like if you're in a situation where you don't have money and you think that opening commissions... and it's the first time you're doing it and you think that it's going to be, you know, put you in a financially stable situation like it won't. It takes a, it takes time to build up clientele. It takes time, man. So like if you're in a dire situation, get a job, you know, even if it's like any job, weighing tables, whatever, and then try doing commissions on the side. Absolutely. This is a mm. very important point because so many people make this mistake that they think that mm. first time opening commissions is going to be a success everything is gonna no you have to be really really good to just start commissions and just become a what you have to be loish you know what i mean it's like <laughs> <laughs> yeah i think it's just have to have a big following or people who really want you to draw something custom to them even following doesn't equal commissions sadly mm. you see and i've noticed that uh, when talking to other people uh, when talking to especially well when it comes to patreons and everything you have these people with huge followings on instagram 
And then I hear about how their Patreons are doing or how their commissions are doing. And they're not doing very well because hmm. following doesn't always equal money. Mm -hmm. You're, the art that people click, like, like whatever, reblog, re whatever, doesn't mean that they're going to pay money for it. There is the distinction. So you have to be very, very careful. Again, it, try it out, but don't jump into it like your only way of uh, place of income, basically thinking that, oh, I have uh, 100k subscribers on Instagram, that means that I'm going to be a successful freelance artist. Like, no, try it out first. You know, have that stable job on the side. You can always quit the job. Speaking about money, the next question would be, how do I price my artwork? The mysterious, I'll just call it the mysterious uh, art pricing uh, question. And the answer to it is, it depends. <laughs> That's it. Credits roll. Have a nice day, everyone. <laughs> if, if you can take one thing away from this uh, podcast is uh, always take money up front, first of mm, all. Yeah. At least like ha have some people don't like when you take all the sum up front because, you know, coming from their perspective, the client is also like a person and they also don't want to be scammed. So sometimes like half and half is... That's a very good uh, discussion, actually, Veta. And I still stand by take all money up front because hmm. it is okay. much easier to drag an artist for scams. And I've seen it happen. So what these people do, these master scammers, they drag the time, the time frame. You say, okay, I'll complete your commission in a month. And they're like, oh, no, my dog got sick, blah, blah, blah. You know, and mm -hmm. usually genuinely bad things happen to people. I'm not saying that excuses don't. It really depends what kind of relationship you have with an artist. But if you feel like the, the artist is dragging the things too long, you know, it can be a red flag. You can definitely ask for a refund if it's like a year or something. And as an artist, you also need to be very straightforward with communicating with uh, your client about how long things are going to take. And if you're, they're taking longer, you should be the one, you should be the one emailing people saying, I'm sorry, like, this is going to take longer than that. Because the worst thing is when a client has to chase after you Mm -hmm. Very bad etiquette, in my opinion. But in most cases, a bigger amount of artists are the ones who don't get paid, sadly, statistically speaking. Yeah. That's why I say get the money up front. Actually, there's a site called Artist Beware, I think, where people are documenting unreliable artists and also, I think, unreliable clients, too. Hmm. We can link that, I guess, if we find yeah, it. Yeah, if, if I find it, actually, yeah, it's very useful. I actually ran a little poll. I say a little poll because I only ran it from yesterday evening, but I did collect some data. So I basically uh, asked people, asked artists, how much would they charge for a commission and asked clients how much would they pay? So as in a commission example, I took uh, Jasmine from Aladdin because it's a well-known character and she also has like a bit of some accessories, you know, so it's not like like a completely plain portrait. So we're talking about a bust, like a full color bust. Mm -hmm. Disclaimer, people have different styles. People take different amount of hours. So it's just about, you will figure it out on your own as you're doing commissions. But if you want to start out from somewhere, these are some ideas that you can start out when it comes to price. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's, let's hear it. <laughs> let's hear the results. So the poll pricings are from 10 to 50 dollars 50 to 100 100 to 200 and 200 plus mm -hmm. so on twitter the large majority we're talking 57 percent 50 to 100 dollars for a full color bust commission so 50 to 100 on instagram interestingly there is a fight between 10 to 50 dollars and 50 to 100 dollars so basically 10 to 50 yeah so 32 percent polled 10 to 50 dollars and 44 percent oh. 50 to 100 so what it means to me what i'm interpreting huh. in a sense is that i think on my twitter i have a lot more advanced artists and professional artists intermediate who are following me and on instagram i think I'll, i have a lot more beginner artists or it could be just not the artists but also like art connoisseurs who just enjoy collecting art you know maybe maybe i've noticed that people who rank 
art commissions like with that 10 to 50 dollars for a full color drawing i noticed that they're usually a bit younger uh, meaning that they probably don't have like a really well paying job uh, mm -hmm. to invest a lot of money into art you'd be surprised that a lot of older people would do that too because of anxiety mm -hmm. and again like it, people. <laughs> a lot of people a lot of artists in general we we tend to undervalue ourselves especially when you're oh, starting yeah. out. But interestingly, for those people who are, you know, undervaluing themselves, I also ran a poll on Instagram saying how much clients would pay for your bust commission. So same choices. There's actually a fight between 50 to to $100 and 100 to 200 to $200. So 10 to 50 hmm. was only 18%. So people are willing to pay over $50 for a full color bust commission. Okay, that's, that's a lot better. That makes me, that makes me happier. <laughs> but take it with a grain of salt because first of all, you need to have some kind of a skill set. This, like, mm -hmm. like, I cannot promise you that you're going to get this money, but you can start with lower end. Take like three slots and then see if people are willing to pay 30, 45, 50 dollars. Next time you commission, ask for more. If people are not buying it, then you can lower the prices. I think there is a, a big problem of a lot of younger artists undervaluing their art. It, it's probably more of like a separate <laughs> conversation, but art babies coming into the art industry and they're you know also in the same market for the art commission and they really undervaluate what they should be asking yeah because maybe no one's you know buying it just now and they need the money now so they keep on like lowering it and then what happens over time the whole perception of the artists by these clients, it changes, right? The clients start to think, why should I be paying you $50 for the same thing that this uh, little dude can, you know, do for two euros? So undervaluing yourself is also not, not very good. What I could advise to Lil Billy when, when they would want to price their artwork correctly is just looking at people around your skill level see in their commission sheets what prices they're writing but also be sure to estimate how long you might take making the drawing right so for example if you're looking at something that's going to take you eight hours to finish think about how much you will be earning by an hour and see if in your demographic it is correctly priced there are also google sheets i've, I've seen on the internet we can link them in the description as well created to see what other industry artists are getting paid according to their level and expertise or again you know the demographic thing country they're hired in stuff like that so it's not about commission prices but it's kind of what they're getting paid hourly so you might want to look into that as well as another good message in the poll that i've noticed is that artists they say that they would take 50 to 100 dollars but they would pay 100 to 200 so artists themselves basically say i will take less but i will pay you more to draw do you see that connection of like undervaluing yourself but you want to support your fellow artists it, that was interesting mm. and also there's six percent of people who were like hell yeah i'm gonna pay over 200 dollars keep this in mind that the price is very flexible. At some point, you can grow to a level that you can ask for way more because it's so subjective. It really depends on your demand. All of this is very flexible and, and can change. Have you heard of this furry artist? Uh, I, I tried to find them yesterday, but I couldn't. But they're quote unquote controversial because people were complaining about their prices being too high. Oh, I've seen it on Twitter, yes. Which I think is absurd. I checked them out as well. I think it was like around 1,000 to 3,000 for like yeah. full on painted stuff. Yeah. yeah, I think it's like, come on, the companies pay way more than that to artists. I think it's fine. I think it's fine as well. Like yeah. if, also, it's, it depends on the person, right? If the, that artist can tell you, I'm going to do two commissions a month and I'm going to be living, you know, free and I don't have to worry about it and I do get those two commissions a month then why shouldn't they price it so high? Like, I don't, I don't understand. Why, why were people complaining? I was so confused with that. Because you see, people think that art is... How, how dare you? Like, if I can, personally can't afford it, it's bad. 
that's that's the uh, that's the logic of these people because it's like yeah. I want you to draw my furiosis. How dare you price your art so high? But let me tell you, if, if we're talking about Billy, I don't know Johnny. Let me tell you, Johnny, art is not a necessity. Art is not food. Art is not electricity. Getting art. It's like a privilege, extra entertainment kind of thing that you buy because all your necessities are paid for, basically. So when people mm -hmm. are complaining about art prices, like, shut up. Again, internet, like, <laughs> internet etiquette is so important, but you wouldn't go to a cafe and be like, oh my God, this coffee is so expensive. That's very Plenty of people do that. <laughs> yeah, but not as much, not as much as on the internet, I feel like. I think the internet gives uh, people that anonymity that they think they have <laughs> and then they're a bit more like rowdy yeah. <laughs> in my opinion. Because in public, people will think you're a fool. Yeah. You know, people who are self-conscious, of course, because you have people who are not self-conscious and they don't care. Yes, I think you can choose to go to a coffee shop that offers more expensive coffee and okay, you come in right into the coffee place and you see the price. And you don't start yelling at the person who's making the coffee. You just walk out and, you know, try to find yeah. a coffee shop that you can afford. And Absolutely. it's on you that you couldn't, you can't afford a thing that you want to get. Yeah. People, it's weird that people, you know, do this. And while for a coffee shop, it would be a bit of a different thing. You can like say like, oh, damn, that coffee shop is so overpriced, you know. But yeah, at the end of the day, you're probably just going to like leave and find another one that you can afford. And okay, yeah. maybe that coffee is like a better quality. Maybe it's the same quality as everywhere else, but it's on them to price their product as they want to. Again, it's not a, even coffee, like it's not a necessity. You can make coffee at home. Another story. I did a commission recently, but at the convention, at the Komi, I completely forgot because I didn't plan to do commissions. But people kept coming up and be like, are you doing commissions? Are you doing commissions? I was like, no, no, no. <laughs> And then at day two, you know, because when you do commissions and you have to sell your art, if you don't have an assistant and I didn't have an assistant, it's very hard. Uh -huh. You're drawing with pencils, your hands are full of pencils and then you have to handle money. You have to handle uh, yeah. artwork. It's just, it's very stressful. But second day was more chill. I was like, okay, why not? And then one person came and they're like, are you doing commissions? I was like, yeah, sure. And they're like, how much? And I was like, I'll finish, I'll make it, and then you can pay whatever you want. Oh, okay. So, yeah, so I took two commissions and I said, pay what you want. How did that turn out? So the first commission was more simple. It was very small. Yeah, I did it uh, quite fast and she paid me 25 euros. That's fair. Absolutely fair for like a convention, mm. whatever, doodly kind of commission. Absolutely fine. And then the other commission I took longer. It was like only pencil. It wasn't color. I guess it took about an hour overall. The person was like, I love it. Uh, and uh, I got 100 euros for it. Mm -hmm. Not saying you're gonna you should do the same experiment as me. It's just that sometimes when you don't know how much to ask, you can be like, if you're starting out, you can be like, you can pay what you want. That wraps up our episode for this week. And guys, if you have any topic suggestions or ideas, please share in the comments below. Uh, drop a like on the video since it helps us reach more listeners. Thank you for sticking out until the end, and I'll talk to you in the next one. Bye.